to the cloud. Okay, so good evening, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, this evening, our monthly meeting is being held at School of Fish, and we are so excited. Uh, you're going to be hearing in just a little bit from Jay Wilson with CJ. Um, I do have some announcements before I turn it over to him. So uh, the reminders, photo of the month is open right now. You can submit your pictures for June. You can vote for the May photos. And congratulations to user ID Raul, uh, who is our April winner. And just a reminder, the winners get a $50 gift certificate and you, the winner, get to pick whichever of our sponsored local fish stores you would like to uh, have your gift certificate from. So um, that's pretty cool. We also have our Bounce Back Part 2 giveaway. That's going to be Zoom only on the last day of the month, May 31st at 7 o'clock. We have uh, a a little over $20,000 between part one and part two to, to really just help people that were impacted by that horrible Texas ice storm. You know, the power was out, everybody's aquariums were freezing. Um, and we've had such generous donations um, from many companies. So um, this is a little something to put back in and help those people get their tanks restarted. Um, it, so you all are, are familiar with bounce back. Um, we do still have some tables available for our summer frag swap. Um, that is June 18th from 12 to 3. Or if you're a premium member, you do get VIP early access. And we're going back to the church at Heritage Trace Church there in Fort Worth. Um, we are looking for a frag tank refurbishment. So Drex, who's on here, hey Drex. Um, is, is leading the charge there. And so um, that'll make it easier if you, as part of the raffles, if you pick one of the frags, we'll have the, the frags all consolidated there at the Hobby Club table, that's our goal. And then mark your calendars. Our next meeting is going to be June 22nd. It will be a hybrid meeting like this with both Zoom. So if you're coming in through Zoom here, or if you're here in person and you're seeing the giant, uh, screen up there and then we've got pizza in the back on the counter. Um, if you're coming straight from work, that's helpful. But June 22nd, our guest speaker is Raven from Algae Barn and actually they're going to have a, a team of speakers and the physical location for that Zoom uh, guest speaker is Odyssey Pets. They're our newest sponsor. Um, and then to wrap up our announcements, you will see the Hobby Club we have a, a table at Dallas Coral Farmers Market on June 4th. And we're about to hit a milestone on our YouTube channel. So this is going to be posted up on our YouTube channel after the, the meeting and training this evening. Um, we did just get a revised, it's awesome, oh my gosh. Um, so there's a new bus tour video uh, thank you, Wes, for putting that together, and that got uploaded just recently. Um, so we're about to hit 100 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time. Um, and hold on one second. I just dropped the piece of paper. So those are my announcements. I will repeat them for anyone who comes in late, uh, either here in person or, or joins late here. Um, and we'll also do a tour of School of Fish after uh, Jay speaks and after I, I recap announcements. So I'm gonna switch gears here and I'm so excited this evening to bring to you guys um, Jay Wilson. Um, and Jay kindly provided me this bio that I'm, I'm gonna just expand a little bit upon because, oh my gosh, Jay, you don't know this, but you were a special request. You were the very first company I reached out to for guest speakers. I'm a new secretary for the club. Oh, and awesome. We, and we brainstormed and said, who would we most like? And what is the most important thing? And it was Flo. And to have CJ, the Cadillac of I, of pumps of flow and you, oh my gosh, as I've told people, um, because this was actually, for those that don't know, we, Jay and I started talking, what, November, December of last year? Yeah. So this has been in, in planning for, 
for a long time now and everyone knows you and everyone loves you and um oh, I that's a good thing some people that, that traveled from dallas and they met you in florida and they're like and he he shook my hand i mean you have touched <laughs> so many lives and we are just so excited to have you this evening um so Appreciate jay wanted that. me to share um, he's a 13 year old vet, 13 year old. He's a 13 year yep. Navy veteran with a passion for water in a box and a lot of energy. He have, uh, fish helped save his life and his mind. He's been keeping fish most of his life, but more seriously for just over 12 years. And for those of you who were on uh, the Zoom early before the recording, you got to hear some of the behind the scenes, how he handles his home tanks with all the traveling he does. So thank you for sharing that too. Mm -hmm. This hobby industry has given him purpose again, and that is to share, to raise awareness and help support research and conservation so we can keep this thing we love doing called the aquarium hobby safe and attainable for generations to come. What started with a YouTube video is quickly expanding into something he is not only grateful for, but is honored to be doing. He is currently the national sales manager and social media director for CJ, and you are our guest speaker here this evening for Dallas Fort Worth Marine Aquarium Society. And um, he is going to be open to taking questions and answers during the presentation, not just at the end. So if you want to jump in, uh, feel free. And Jay, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much. I'm going to go on awesome. to, to uh, we're, we're all trying to be quiet here. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Well, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate this. Um, this is actually my first talk on, on flow. I've had one done. I've had notes and points for the longest time, but I mainly spoke on bacteria. So I'm, I'm extra excited to kind of talk about this because I'm hoping to kind of uh, dispel some myths about flow, about recirculation, you know, things of that nature. So we, we all have this idea of what we should or shouldn't do. And we all go to the internet or our local fish store or friends that have been doing it to get this information. And if anybody's familiar with the telephone game, over time, you probably got wrong information at some point. And it's no fault to anybody other than that this is how this hobby has grown. So while it's good, it's also not so good when it comes to setting up your first reef tank uh, or any aquarium for that matter. So where I have a little bit of clout to talk about this is I do work for CJ. Uh, CJ has been around since 73. They're out of Italy. So I know you said Cadillac, but we're more the Lamborghini if we're going to be true to the name. Um, and we're known for customer service, uh, high quality pumps and, and a warranty. But what I'm gonna talk to you today about is choosing a return pump, how you choose the return pump, regardless if it's CJ or not, and then how to choose the right flow inside your aquarium. Because I think we get lost along the way with flow. We go, oh, I just need X much, but that's not necessarily the case. And each aquarium, get out of town, is actually different in terms of the necessity for flow. Um, so I'll go over some key points about uh, pumps. If you have questions along the way, stop me, ask the question. Uh, but the first is head pressure. So the head pressure is how much that return pump needs to overcome to get water back into your tank, whatever that number is. The general rule is five to 10 times the tank volume per hour. I don't like the 10 times. So this is coming from a return pump. I do not like the 10 times. And the reason I don't like the 10 times is because if you're moving water that fast through your filtration system, your media that is designed to harbor the autotrophic and heterotrophic bacteria does really not have a, enough time where the water is passing over so fast. It's supposed to be slower. That's why we put it in, you know, the slowest chamber. Uh, but the idea is if we're doing 10 times, it's still going to work, but you're not going to have as stable of an aquarium when it comes to your your bacteria solidifying their colonies. So if you look at that at 10 times, 180 gallon aquarium is 1800 gallons, right? 1800 gallons an hour. So we know that if we're going off the 10 times rule, that 180 gallon aquarium is 1800 gallons per hour, but that's not the case <laughs> because what happens is, is we get to, oh, hey, this, this pump right here, does 1800 gallons an hour 
Well, this does 1800 gallons an hour at zero resistance. You throw this sucker in a bucket, it's gonna do 1800 gallons an hour. But if you now start implementing it into your system, that 1800 gallons an hour that you bought is not necessarily the fault of the manufacturer, it has been the fault of the information that we've been receiving for a long time. So once you connect it, the challenges just come into play. The water needs to go up, it either needs to go left, right, it tees off. And then as we were talking earlier, you start adding a million different things in terms of a scrubber or a reactor, and now your water is everywhere. Um, so we have to realize that if we're going off that 10 times rule, that 1800 gallons per hour is not nearly going to be enough just buying that pump right off the shelf. It's, that's just not the case. That's not the science that comes behind it. So we also factor in what the head pressure is going to be, right? So you've got how high that pump can push that water, which is not going to be 1800 gallons an hour once it reaches, let's say 23 feet. Uh, but you have to factor in all of the other things. Um, and this is where I get excited talking about water. You can't stop water, right? A flowing river, the ocean, you can't stop it. You can redirect it. It may lose speed, but it will still be there. Um, so the part is we could throw as many T's and 45's and go crazy with gate valves, but we have to understand that we are restricting that water flow dramatically. And we are also restricting the pump's ability to get the water as stated from whatever manufacturer it is. So head pressure, if you calculate, I'm gonna go off the same one I wrote down to make it easy, 180 gallon mix reef, okay? I don't wanna go specifics. I know we got some SPS love and stuff, but I wanna keep it mixed just because I think majority of folks are in that mix reef category. Even if they sway one way or another, it kinda of sits in that mix reef. So. The vertical distance between the return pump and the output mounted on your return line, let's say is five feet. Okay, that's what we're, we're just going to try to make this as easy as possible. So additionally, every 10 feet of lateral piping, one foot of head pressure to one foot. So you're reducing. Um, and this is CJ's determination is how I got these numbers. Um, I'm not just making these up <laughs> based on my own stuff. Um, so every bend requires more effort. And what I mean by bend is if you're using flex tubing or if you're using hard PVC and you're putting in, you know, joints, 45s, 90s, it just requires the pump to do more work. So each 90 degree elbow adds one foot of head pressure. So you're taking water that has to hit that PVC and then go this way. So the pump is gonna get some slight back pressure. So if you, and this is a silly, but if you added six 90 degree elbows, you just reduced by six feet. So now it's starting to get really rough on that 1800 gallon an hour pump you bought. It's, it's gonna trickle and, and you don't want that, especially especially in any saltwater aquarium, but more so a mixed reef and then sliding into SPS. If you do 45 degree elbows, you would add half of a foot in terms of head height. So you're basically cutting it in half because the 45, as you know, is just far easier on that pump to push that water that way. So if you had two times 45 degree elbows, it's another foot. Other factors to consider is reducing tube size or plumbing size. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'll get an email of somebody that's putting together their dream tank and it's beautiful and they've spent months planning PVC, flex tube, and it's all different sizes. And it's like aesthetics I understand, but if you're looking for the efficiency out of your pump and you're looking to get what you paid for, you also have to realize that having multicolored pipe may not be the best if that's what you're going for. You're going to have to buy a, a pump five times X what you think you need at that point. So you, you reduce the tubing size in, in any, you know, most folks are going to take it from an inch and go down to a quarter. I, I've never seen that. There's probably somebody, but I've never seen it. Um, 
But if you're reducing the pipe size, you're going to take, you know, two feet. And now you add any accessories from that. You're looking at, I'll use a clear water scrubber, for instance, because we have our pumps work hand in hand with those. Um, you take two feet off for that if you're running it off the same return pump. So if I calculated it, I take all those feet that we just added. It's, it's the five feet from the vertical distance, right? The one foot for the lateral pipe, six foot for the uh, 90 degrees, and then a foot for those elbows, two for the pump or the tubing reduction, and then two for the accessories you add. You have 17 feet of head pressure to overcome at 1800 gallons. So that, I, you know, that's rough. So when you're looking for that, which if we go back to what I said in the beginning, where I say, I don't really like the 10 times rule, it actually makes it more palatable because you really don't need the 10 times rule. Um, but that's where I'll see, like, for instance, this pump does, um, was this the nine? Yeah. So this pump does 23 feet of head pressure at no resistance and it does 2,500 gallons an hour, no resistance, right? Flat out. I've seen people say, this pump is the craziest, most powerful pump I've ever used. I'm talking like stores in their farms. And then I'll talk to another store and they're like, dude, I had to add three of those. And then I look back and I say, you know, can you send me some photos? Cause it doesn't make sense to me. You know, they're running an inch and a quarter and then they're wide out in this plumbing that they got cutting across their, their tub. And I'm like, well, yeah, now you're trying to pump more water into this massive dilated PVC and you're running it six feet that way to come up and then it tees off. No, I know that it's not going to do that. So the idea Whenever you're looking for a return pump, and I'll at the end, I'll go over it again in terms of how we get the calculation, but you really have to plan your plumbing before you plan your return pump. You really do. Whatever your goals are for that, you really do. And I hate to say this because it's a sales tactic and I don't like it, but if you don't know you're going to add more things along the way, the best bet is to to get a far larger pump that you can turn down with a gate valve or a controllable pump that'll hit your spectrum, um, which seems to be the, the way everybody likes to do it is the controllable pumps, uh, but there is different ways to do it. Um, so this calculation that we did, the five, one, six, one, two, two, to get 17 feet of pressure, the calculation tells us like to achieve five to 10 times turnover rate, we have to have a pump that can handle between 900 gallons and 1800 gallons an hour. So that's why I said that five times is, is more my palate size. I really enjoy a four to six times turnover rate through filtration. I think that's the sweet spot. 10 is just a little too much for me because we can get flow inside that aquarium other places. Uh, but when you're looking at that return pump, so now you're at 900 to 1800 gallons an hour at 17 feet. So, that's really it in a nutshell. Like when you're looking at a return pump, I, I hate to say this, and we actually talked about this. I look at a return pump, take away, take away all of this. It's the heartbeat of your aquarium. If you lose your lights, if my lights went out today, I wouldn't panic as much as I would panic if I had a pump that went down. And it's mechanical, so there's opportunities for it to go down. So when you're buying a pump, no matter what it is, I always, you know, if I'm talking to a hobbyist that's like, hey, I want a CJ pump. Okay, if you want a DC pump, get an AC equivalent that meets your needs just in case. Or whatever pump you have that you're replacing, save it just in case. That's, you, you should always have a backup for that because... If you start adding things and then your pump just starts working over time and something happens or the impeller goes down, you can't get an impeller in a few minutes unless your local store carries it. And most folks aren't walking into their local store and going, hey, I need an impeller for X, Y, Z. So, you know, I'll get customers that come from reef to reef. Hey, I have this is a true story. 
I have a $50,000 system, all the coral in it, SPS actually. My pump is not working right. What do I do? I'm like, um, you don't have a backup pump? At $50,000 total in coral, maybe that's not what, it, what they spent. You don't have a backup? Like, that kind of hurts. <laughs> like, that hurts if I'm your aquarium. I mean, you should have a backup for that, especially a backup impeller if you have that kind of money invested in your aquarium. You know, impellers are expensive because of magnets, so I get it. But nine times out of 10, something that happens with a CJ pump is an impeller related type thing, whether the, the fan blade popped off or, you know, it was running and there, there's a piece of gravel in there. But again, having a backup for what, could potentially happen or what you're dealing with is key. The other thing that I didn't write down, but if you don't clean your pump, you're gonna lose efficiency. It's not gonna hurt the pump per se, but you're gonna notice a decline in its gallons per hour. Uh, that's not the pump's fault, it's our fault. <laughs> it's, you know, so if we don't do water, you know, oil changes on our car, something happens with our car, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. So my recommendation for choosing a return pump is choose the right return pump for your system. Just because your friend has a specific return pump, it does not mean that that return pump is going to work inside your system. And I will go on record and I will say uh, a Vectra may be a better option for you. A Varios may be a better option for you. That, that's just the nature of what we do. Um, we have many different options for you, but sometimes those work better because of fittings, et cetera. But when you're buying that return pump, think about how vital that return pump is for your system. And it's like we talked about earlier, you cheap out on tires. When was the last time you realized all four tires are the only thing that touches the ground in your car? So it's, it's lives and I get it. We put the lives on a different scale of weight, but if you're that much into your aquarium, you should be that much into paying attention to what you are purchasing the first time. Buy once, cry once is how I look at it. You can spend 40, 50, hundred dollars less, but the amount of times you're going to potentially replace that just because it's designed to do exactly what it is. It's, um, you know, I don't want to say a throwaway product, but it was like, I'll use this brand. I think Kia is a great brand now. 12 years ago, Kia was a throwaway brand. You drove it for 10, 15,000 miles or whatever. And then you just, that was it. Cause it was such an inexpensive item. That's not the way we are anymore. Um, so definitely plan it out. And I'm here, you know, I'll, uh, matter of fact, I can always email this to you guys and you can send it out to how I get my calculation. So folks can see it. Um, so now we've figured out gallons per hour in terms of getting it through our filtration and back into the aquarium. We didn't talk about closed loop, but I'll touch on that towards the end because I wonder if any of your members have a closed loop system. I highly, I highly doubt it. Um, it's efficient and powerful, but I highly doubt anybody's doing it anymore. Uh, but I'll touch on that, what, how that could be far superior in some cases. So now flow inside your aquarium. This is your power heads, your gyres. Um, I've even seen folks <laughs> take return pumps and suction cup them on the side. Uh, you can pull off the grates, add the uh, intake valve piece and put a sponge on there. I've seen so many different things. Um, so I always say inside your aquarium, that's up to you. There is no right and there is no wrong except not having any because your return alone is not going to provide you enough flow regardless of what you think, unless you have a closed loop. Um, so we were talking earlier and did quite a bit of pumps in that aquarium. SPS dominant tank. I'm sure you've got quite a bit of rock in there. And that's the other piece that people fail to realize when they're looking at flow inside their aquarium. Um, you know, time and time again, I go, well, how come you don't have a CJ wave pump in there? Oh, because I have uh, an MP40. And 
the MP40 is sitting, you know, you got two, which those are like Rolls Royce cost. And you got four of these puppies on there because you couldn't angle anything, right? So you bought one, you're like, well, I don't want to mix match. You know, that's aesthetics we talked about. Now you've got these pumps that have great power, but they're not hitting every place that you need them to hit. Uh, especially if you're trying to keep, you know, anything off your corals, number one, your rock, and then detritus settling at the bottom, like you want to hit these areas. And I don't know about you, but I'm not about to put my hand in there and, you know, blow around the pump every once in a while, just to get rid of it. I want it set up so I can enjoy my aquarium. So whenever you have an established tank, we're going to use the same mixed reef. You can calculate that by dividing the flow from your power heads by the tank volume. That's how you'll know how to achieve this max number. So if you did four of these, which they don't look like they can do much, I get it, uh, but these will do just over 2,200 gallons an hour at full, full blast. Um, it's a more wide flow. Um, so at 2,250 gallons an hour at 100%, if you times that by four, we get 9,000 gallons an hour inside that aquarium, right? You're getting, you're already got your recirculation happening from your return pump, but your inflow is completely different. So at 9,000 divided by 180, that's 50 times an hour <laughs> of what's, you know, I can only imagine what yours is. <laughs> it's more than 50 times an hour, I can tell you that. Um, but that's if they're running at 100%. Most folks have them on a, you know, a reef crest mode or a tidal mode or whatever the case is to try to emulate the best we can based on our corals. So ideal tank turnover rate for flow inside, 50 is on the low to mid range scale, actually, when you're talking about a mixed reef. It's more towards 75 times on the mid to higher end. So when you start getting into, you know, more SPS or you've got a lot of rock, you know, that's a... I hate to give that answer when folks ask me, well, how many, how many of these pumps do I need? Well, I'm like, could I see a picture of your tank? Well, why? It's a 180 gallon aquarium. Yeah, I, and that's awesome. But I have no idea what you have where. And honestly, every time I have this conversation, and usually it's at, you know, a reef of Palooza, Aquashella, reef stock, whatever, I get a deer in the headlights. Like, uh, I didn't know that that was, yeah. Well, if you have a big piece of rock that's diverting the flow, are you really getting, you know, let's say you've got euphilia or you have an anemone that loves to be up top near the light. Are you really moving it so that it can clean itself off? Cause that's one thing they cannot do very well or at all is clean themselves. Uh, they can do just about everything, ruin your tank, split. <laughs> they can do all of the great things that they do but it's up to us to knock off what they can't get off themselves. And so it could be four extreme SDCs. It could be two MP60s. I don't know that. I don't know that answer. The idea is uh, whenever I talk about setting up an aquarium, I always say, find out what style of aquarium you want. So if we take that from my freshwater days to saltwater, what is your end goal? I know it's hard to think I'm going to get this far, but is it going to be a mixed reef? Are you going to have some big fish? You know, are these big fish predatory fish, you know, but are reef safe and they just love food? You, you really have to understand these things in order to build a stable aquarium that moves water efficiently for you. Otherwise, you're going to be in a world of hurt. You really will. And you're, you're spending a lot of money. The tank alone is expensive. And then you start dabbing into those colorful sticks. Those are super expensive. Like this stuff is rewarding. It's fun. Um, I actually like the, the community part of it where you get to meet new people. But if you just willy nilly this along the way, it's, it's like building a house. You have to have a good foundation. I mean, I, it's cliche, but it's true. And that foundation comes with making sure you have the aquarium that you need for your end goal and you have the pumps to get you to that end goal. That's really a big piece. Spend your money later on on more expensive lights, but focus in on the water movement first because we actually keep water 
than we keep anything else. Because the last time I checked, you weren't taking biopsies of your coral or your fish. You were always doing water samples. You are legit keeping water first. And that's the most important thing. So I'll go over it one more time. And then if you folks have questions or if you're just, you heard something and you want to know what my thoughts are from a manufacturer, and then I'll show you some different uh, return pump styles and how it could affect where you use it, how you use it and things like that. Um, so keep in mind, whenever you're, you're purchasing a return pump, you have to factor in head height. You have to factor in, even though we don't say it, it's back pressure. So that's where we're getting with this, this formula that we use. So the gallons per hour that you see off the box is at a dead zero. It's just a pump in a bucket and it's pumping that water at 1800 gallons. Um, the next step is to calculate that head pressure. We're going to go off and I'm going to send this so it makes sense to you guys. I have it all typed out to be easy. So vertical distance between the return pump and output uh, is five foot of head pressure. And then every 10 foot of lateral piping is another foot of head pressure. Uh, every bend requires effort, of course, from the pump. So if you did 690 degrees, which please don't do that. Please don't do that. If you did, um, I get it. But I mean, just try not to do too many of those. Because um, no matter what, the pump's going to work overtime, no matter what pump it is. But you're looking at six feet. So it's legit a foot every 90. So you're adding, right? So we're already at five foot. Now we're at 11 feet with the 690s. And then for every 45 degree, it's a half a foot. So it's a reduction because the 45 is not as drastic. And then if you reduce or increase, because I've seen folks increase and it does change it, we recommend calculating two feet of head pressure. So if it's an inch and a quarter out and you go to an inch later on, understand that you have to add two feet of head pressure to what you need to get to. Um, and so if you decide to add scrubber or, I mean, there's so many things like a filter mat, what is these rollers are a big thing right now. Uh, filter mat rollers, uh, reactors, anything that you put in between that return pump and that water coming out of your lock line in your aquarium, you have to add two feet to. So you typically add two feet for that accessory. So if we did that, that's five foot for where the pump was going to do it without any obstruction. And then it was a foot because of the 10 foot of lateral piping. Because if you're doing that many 90s, we've, we have about 10 feet of lateral piping, which is a lot of money. Um, and then you have six feet for the 90s. And then you have a foot for the 245s. And then you have two feet for any accessory you add and two feet for a reduction or a massive increase of pipe size. And that gets you to 17 feet of head pressure. So at 180 gallon aquarium, if you wanted 1800 gallons an hour, you would have to find a pump that could do 1800 gallons an hour at 17 feet of head pressure. And one thing I will say about CJ, which helped me learn these dang things, is on every box, there's a graph to show you at what head pressure you're going to get what gallons per hour. So the one that I was holding, this big one, this ADV was the 2,700 gallons, 2,500 gallons an hour um, at 14.8 feet of head pressure. On the box, it'll show you this arc and then it'll pinpoint each model in that line of where you're at at its max head height. And I mean, it's, it was beneficial to me. It's definitely beneficial to a consumer to learn about that product before they actually purchase it. Because if I was an aquarium store owner, it would be hard for me to take back a return pump, even if you just took it out of the box, hooked it up, and it just wasn't what you needed. I know it sucks, but as an aquarium store owner, it sucks even worse to try to take that back. Luckily, if it is a CTA product, we do work with them, but most folks don't take that stuff back, which I understand because it's very difficult to then try to resell it to somebody. Well, why did they return it? This is the heartbeat. This is the one person 
that comes in and says, well, this was the heartbeat of my aquarium. Why am I going to buy it used? So just buy once, cry once. I know this stuff can get very expensive, but I mean, what type of lighting do you folks use? Like what brand? Anybody? Ecotech. Okay. Radions. XR15 or what? 30. Okay. What was that thing like? 800 something bucks? Yeah. How Compared many you got? The six, two. So, okay. So we're looking at 1600 bucks already in two and Ecotech lights, right? How much was your return pump? Well, I got them at a, as a local hobbyist like that was getting rid of them. I paid 180 okay. for two. Heck yeah. <laughs> Pretty close. Right? So you're looking at, you said you had a, what, 180 or 150? 150. So 150. So when I look at it, you're looking at, you know, just a single CJSDC 9.0 is, uh, 450, and I think the Vectra L2, if I remember correctly, is like 575 or something like that. Yeah. So I'll get people that will go, Oh, no, 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 no. And then I ask them, Well, what kind of lights you have? Well, I spent $800 on one light, but I got three of them over my day. I'm like, Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. This is like the reptile industry. Like, you'll buy a $7,000 snake and you put them in a $6 rubber made tub after the holidays. This doesn't make, this is not clicking with my brain. So please, for the love of reef keeping, if, if you have questions about return pumps, I am available. You can find me just about anywhere. My email is just about, I'm on reef to reef with my dang personal email on there to email me. Like I want to make sure that you get the right information when you're purchasing your equipment even if it doesn't end up being CJ, you know, I, I get that. We don't have products that fill everybody's taste. Some folks have to have a specific brand. Some folks have to have a specific application. I get it. Um, at the end of the day, I'm going to be here to help you regardless, but you know, the, a big piece is make sure you're getting your money's worth and make sure you're protected when you get that, that product, whatever it is. Yeah. Jay, so yeah. Yeah. We have a question here, um, and you started yep. to touch on it. Um, you talked about uh, low, low to medium, and yeah. you said 50, but you didn't give a range or a chart. And so the question is, can you, can you expand upon that or talk on that a little bit more? Yeah, so I did, I did early talk about that. So I said, if you had four of these pumps in here, at running at 100%, this would give you 9,000 gallons an hour, right? If they were running at 100%. Then you divide that by your aquarium size, which is 180, right? That's where we get 50 times an hour of in aquarium flow from four of these bad boys, okay? And, I'll, and this is all written down, so you'll have it. But an ideal tank turnover, that's for a mixed reef, if at 50 times, we're at low to mid range. But if we get to the upper range, mid to high, you're looking at 75 times that, right? So you're looking at probably adding three more extreme SDCs um, if that's exactly what you are trying to achieve. I don't try to achieve that in my aquarium, but if you have you know, a longer, wider aquarium, it may benefit you. Um, that's where I talk about, you know, this is not including what your return pump does. So if your return pump is splashing out at much higher than you wanted, you know, then you, you can factor that in as well. Um, and you could put four on the back, two on the sides. Um, matter of fact, I only have mine on the back because I don't like stuff on the sides. It takes away the best part of that aquarium to me. I <laughs> just, I can't do it. Um, and although gyres, I think are pretty cool. Um, I will not clean a gyre. That is just not my forte. There are too many pieces. When I take that sucker apart. Um, I think it's a great invention. I think it works for what it does. Um, I just have to clean that too much. And I've already talked about prior to, I'm very simplistic in how I keep all my aquariums from saltwater to freshwater. I have turtles, all of it because I travel so much. I, I don't want to spend my off time 
you know, cleaning, my motto has always been 90% view, 10% touch. Yeah. So I should be viewing that aquarium 90% of the time. I think in a saltwater tank to be safer, it's 95.5. But um, that 90-10 rule for me is, is, I'm very serious about it because otherwise it takes time from everything. And then it's no longer a fun hobby. I'm always tinkering with something. I've always got my hands in something. And then, you know, coral starts off in itself. My fish looks at me wrong. Now it's passing away. And, you know, now I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink at it to save it. And it's just not, not my style. So, you know, there's a, there's a method to this whole thing. Um, but I think if we fundamentally stayed where we have a stable environment first, right? We're keeping that water. So we've got good return. We've got good in-tank flow. Um, I think 75 times is really high, but if you're keeping SPS, it's a completely different ball game. Yeah. If you're keeping fish from an area where water comes in and out very rapidly, that's not a bad thing. Um, that's why I said understanding potentially where you want that aquarium to go is very, very much ideal in purchasing that once and cry once. Because what I did is probably what a lot of people do is I tried to get my feet wet with a 16 gallon little reef tank. That was stupid. Um, <laughs> and I say that in that way, because I know dang right well, more water volume gives me the ability to have a little flexibility in what happens, right? And I messed that up. So then I said, oh, well, I'll go to a 40 gallon because that's good. Um, and it was great, right? For what I was keeping, the fish I had in there, everything was good. And then I got this tank and hindsight's 2020. I probably should have just went for a six footer, but I'm very happy with the footprint. It's just, I should have ideally thought about, am I going to really want that six footer? Now, pumps are not an issue. I guess I can just get those. But lighting <laughs> is a different story. So um, I just so happen my wife works for a lighting company. So that's beneficial. Anyway, regardless, I, I didn't think that through. But also, I didn't think my coral placement through either. So that's why I told you earlier, I took coral out uh, and gave it to my local fish store because I was like, I, I don't want this tank because these coral demand more of my attention and I don't have that attention to give and I don't want to provide them a crappy environment. So, you know, we were talking earlier, you're spending, you know, three hours broadcast feeding or not broadcast feeding, but target feeding all your corals and, you know, petting them and making sure they're okay. And then fast forward now you broadcast feed, right? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and no. it's, you know, some, you still do it. I make my own food. And I put all my coral food in my fish food. So whenever I feed oh, my food. Go. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a, you know, a more innovative way to, you know, to do it. And that's why I talked about the idea for me is on auto feeder on my return, you know, side of my sump. And it's just dumping it in when I need. It's broadcast feeding all those corals. The fish are eating what they need from the water column. And then occasionally I'll give them, you know, something specific like nori um i don't treat my fish you know they don't they don't request cheetos while watching a movie they they have a specific you know they have a specific diet um and i fought this with freshwater it's like well i give my i give my fish uh snacks throughout the day what no like we're not your fish aren't snacking the only thing you're doing is causing more work. Your nitrates are elevated. Now you have algae. You get into salt water. You guys know the drill. Yep. So it's like, they don't snack. They're constantly eating small bits of food throughout the day. That's how they do their best. Um, so, you know, when you, when you take all this at the end of the day, choosing the right return pump, choosing the right inflow of where you're going to get to. And for the love of what we do, I would even recommend buying a cheap backup just to get you by in the event something happens where you have an impeller issue or, you know, hopefully that pump doesn't go down on you. Um, but if you're doing routine maintenance and stuff, you know, I don't, 
I don't see a, an issue of AC pumps last forever. DC pumps slightly different. They have a shorter lifespan than AC driven pumps are. Um, since I've been with CJ, the longest pump in service from a woman on a pond feature, she had it 12 years. And the, she called me, uh, it was a, it was a multi, I think like 1200, it's a return pump. And she called to replace the impeller. And I said, the, the impeller is like three quarters the cost of that specific pump. I, just buy that impeller and I'll send you a new one. Cause that's been way, you've had it so long. There's no reason, you know, let's, let's set you up for success. So buying an inexpensive backup is perfectly fine. I'm sure your local stores have you know, even a bargain bin where they've got something they're taking off to upgrade their system, you know, buying something just in a pinch is, is some, it'll go a long way. Even if you don't use it, you can use it for water changes or whatever later, but just have one of those on hand. Um, so I'll touch on closed loop real quick. I think most of you would understand closed loop, but think about it this way. There's nothing in the aquarium to move water. So there'll be no gyres, there'll be no MP series, there'll be no wave pumps, nothing. Um, the idea is you have your sump with your pump that is going to return the water back to that aquarium. And then you have a plumbing system with a pump, a return pump plumbed into it to give you more efficient and higher power flow. So, and that's to create a more natural environment. A lot of aquariums, public aquariums do that. Uh, so what, you know, hypothetically, what you're doing is taking a pump like this, instead of dropping it in your sump, you're plumbing it, hard plumbing it somewhere, you know, underneath at the back. And you're getting, after you do your little reduction, you're probably getting out of a massive pump, far more power than what you would get out of adding. Now you're up to what, five, six of these gadgets inside your aquarium that may be unsightly to some. So that's what a closed loop, although it's not as popular anymore. Um, I don't even know the last time I've seen a closed loop system, except at a public aquarium and local fish store. So those are very efficient. They just, they do it slightly different than how we are doing it now traditionally. Um, I think Jake Adams just set up a, one of his reefs in his- oh, uh, I, you're right. I did see his, um, he did one of those tanks off to the right where he set up a closed loop. I think it was like a year ago, year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, we saw that at reef stock. Um, and that's, but he's got how many other tanks that are not closed loop, right? It's, there's a lot uh, of plumbing. Yeah, <laughs> many. And it's, so it's, you know, it is what it is. Um, it, was, it was an interesting video we put out on it. It was cool. He's done it multiple times too. If you watch, he's actually gotten better at it. I think he's got like three videos on it. Um, let me show you a few different return pump options and what they offer, just so you have an idea. Cause I think a lot of folks, they're like, wait, that exists or why does it exist? So everybody knows the controllability it's DC, right? We can control it from a certain minimum to a certain maximum. Um, that DC pump is typically more expensive because it comes with features that other pumps don't, right? Full controllability. Ours come with uh, water temp monitoring inside your aquarium, uh, notifications all over the place, no matter where you're at. But then we have, this is my favorite pump. This is why I always hold it. <laughs> this is uh, what we call the ADV, the advanced. So it is the same physical specifications as our DC line. However, this is an AC driven pump. What's cool about this is not only do you get the same rotational volute. So if you had an obscure way where you're plumbing this and you needed this volute to move, you can do that. You can plumb all but two of our pumps in our line externally, which does not mean dry. It just means water is running through them and it's not submerged but you can run all of our pumps, but these two pumps completely out of the water as long as water is flowing through them. But the benefit to this is this pump is doing the 2,500 gallons an hour and it's doing it at 70 Watts, which is what the big push was for DC controllable. It was, 
Oh, yay, I can control my pump. Gate valves. Oh, yay, you know, it does all these cool things. And I get it, we sell them and they're, they're great. They have their place. But the big push was energy efficiency. And folks couldn't figure out the AC version is unreal. So the best way to put it into perspective, we have an ADV 5.5. I believe it does like 1,400-ish gallons an hour. We have our Synchro Silent 5.0, which does slightly less gallons per hour than that. They're both AC. This one at the 5.0 does 110 watts. The ADV does 40. Where that comes into play, for somebody like me, I've got four aquariums going on six in my other room, I actually have this one aquarium on its own circuit, a 20, its own 20 amp circuit, because I've got 280 watt lights, my heater, my return pump is only 90 watts, but then anything else I do, I'm just constantly putting it on. So if I plugged in a vacuum with all my other studio lights, I'd just pop a breaker, <laughs> right? So that's a huge benefit to the ADV line. So you have SDC full controllability, then you have our ADV line, which is identical in looks, identical in energy consumption, but doesn't have full controllability. Then you have, which we talked about earlier, the Synchro Silent line. Most folks know this pump, whether it looks like your skimmer pump, uh, we're in pretty much, I mean, this isn't even throwing. I don't, I don't know how many skimmers we're on. Um, we're about to be on some new ones that are coming out. We have controllable skimmer pumps now. Um, but this is the Synchro Silent line. It goes from a Nano all the way to a 5.0. And this is kind of the, I don't know, this is the backbone of what CJ is known for. It is very quiet for an AC driven pump, it is very powerful, and it will last you a while unless you've got you know some obscure lemon um i know folks that'll run these we were talking you said 1.5 you had for four years you know i know these go in 10 years easy there's quite a few that are 10 years easy especially in public aquariums i'll go back and they don't clean anything and i'm like how is that thing even still moving water but another feature that a lot of folks use this for is um they'll use it for a polisher inside their sump so it comes with pretty much everything you need to, you know, remove all of the items you need to remove, screw in your barb. You could put a sponge in, create your own filter and let it do its thing. I've seen people tuck it away in large aquariums just to have more flow because they could hide it because they had a, you know, 10, 12 foot aquarium. Um, I've seen that these do so many different things. Think of the MP series. Remember the MP, what is it? No, is it the MP from Marineland? Who was the one that had a maxi jet? Maxi jet. This is the, it's the same concept. Um, yeah, the 1200 then, yeah, was very popular. Yeah, very popular. That's exactly what it is. It is literally like a 1.0 turned with an extra attachment. So they just took a return pump and added an extra attachment. And people went nuts for it, especially in the freshwater side. And I'm like, okay. I mean, they went crazy. Um, these are traditional pumps. So, you know, they have their place of pulling water in and pushing water up. Then you have smaller return pumps that actually take water from the bottom. These are great for, you know, ATOs. These are great for small uh, all-in-ones. Uh, these also can dial flow up and down and, you know, their head height. I think this one's like two feet. <laughs> this one's like three feet. But these are going to be designed for smaller applications. I've seen them on the plank feeder uh, from Avast Marine. I've seen these on reactors. Matter of fact, eShops uses these on their nano skimmers and other items. It's a very popular uh, return pump, so to speak, but it does filter it also with a sponge in the bottom. Um, and then this is our smallest one that we make, which pulls water in from the side. Uh, which is also a good application. So you can run these tanks a little bit lower than what you'd normally do. Um, and that's pretty much it for our return line. Uh, we have everything from 
durable pond returns all the way up to, of course, your controllable high-end pumps. Uh, but I would say all of our return pumps, except those two small ones, they all have a five-year warranty. So that's that won't change. So our Synchro Silent line, our ADV, uh, even our SDC line has a has a five-year warranty. And it's usable. When we say that, it's not, we're not going to make you jump through hoops, then send that pump back. That's not fair. That's just not fair. So you got a problem, vanilla ice it, we'll solve it, and then boom, get it back to you. Um, as far as wave pumps, there is, we only have two. We have the Voyager line, and then we have our extreme line. Uh, doesn't mean we're not in, in talks to make different ones, but this is a wider, gentler flow. This was designed more for reef tanks. It'll go about four feet. We have it all the way up to 2250 gallons per hour, all the way down to, I think, like 300 and some odd gallons per hour. They all physically look identical. However, this one is the controllable one, which is plugs into a controller. And you can go from 260 all the way to 2250. Um, or you can buy the AC ones, same look, no controllability. These also have a five-year warranty. The benefit to something like this over, let's say an MP10 or up to an MP40. Um, the big benefit besides price, besides warranty yeah. is the ability to angle. So you can angle our pump. You can actually hook our pump up if you have Euro bracing and angle them down so you potentially would never see them. Um, so this eliminates your need for putting them on the side of aquarium. I get it. The cord is not in the aquarium when you have, you know, an MP10 or an MP40, but you still see it. It's still doing the same thing. You're still trying to get it away from. So if it's electronics inside, then go close loop <laughs> because anything you're going to put in there could potentially have that, you know, negative effect at potentially. Um, yeah. So you can easily hide these. I don't have one with me. It's actually in my aquarium running, but our Voyager series is more of a direct, direct flow. Um, those are bulkier. However, they have an, like this bracket that you can turn them sideways and it takes them from this long to about this long. And so you can hide them on overflow boxes. Both of our magnets are fully submersible. You can angle those any which way you want, um, but those are only AC driven. And we have that Voyager series down to a little nano. That's the size of a quarter head in terms of its, you know, uh, great in the front. And we have them all the way up to 4,000 gallons an hour, which is probably the number one used tub powerhead in the market. I mean, uh, Top Shelf uses it worldwide, has used them um, even with their, you know, with other things that happen. They just are very good at moving water very far, uh, but they're big. They're not designed to be super pretty in the side of your aquarium. So the, the Voyager series, I was actually planning on upgrading them. So I built, I built my own controller like 10 years ago. And yeah. part of it is a bunch of solid state relays that turn on and off the power heads, which yep. most AC power heads do not. Half the time they go backwards and then they eventually destroy the impeller. Sounds like high door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think I've had a couple of those. Uh, but but it the looks Corrales like the Voyagers, it, yeah. the, the Voyagers yeah. have the flat impeller that can, it still pumps water regardless of which way it spins, right? Correct. So, so they uh, should but also your Voyager will still be okay no matter what anyways, because uh, CJ has designed them to run off of a start stop technology. We used to have one called the wave surfer, but with the controllability craze in North America, where there was no reason for us to continue to sell it. Um, but I'll use top shelf, for example, they have, I think they have like 70 something Voyager tens running and they run them off of, I'm bad with the product name, but it's the Neptune, um, uh, power supply thing the, like the power brick what do they call yeah, it the yeah. xp8 or eight or whatever i forgot i forgot <laughs> the name of that thing but um they run it off that start and stop all the time okay Did somebody have a bad experience with it no i was i was just i had just recently uh oh it looks, sounds, looks like <laughs> maybe somebody has <laughs> i get yeah 
<laughs> I forgot the name. I'm bad with product. I moved names, on. So I, guess. I moved on from Apex. I went to oh, Hydra. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha, I went to gotcha, Hydra. Gotcha. No, so, no, I got you. Yeah. So, Jay, please tell me you're getting ready to hook up with Hydros. I'll tell you this. Um, we are actually, um, of course, Apex ready. We were Apex ready in the beginning. We were waiting on Neptune systems. Uh, we're also, it's a weird thing with GHL. It is on the box. It can be ran. I just seen for the first time at um, Rifa Palooza Orlando, GHL had our pumps with a different color. Um, so I know there's compatibility somewhere there. Uh, what I do know for Hydros is I currently, um, my wife used to work for Coral View, so I do have a Hydros under there. I'm not crazy in control. So the only thing it has, it, it's really doing my ATO and uh, my temp monitoring. Um, but outside of that, we have everything from Hydros that we need. CJ is very, very specific on how it works because what most people don't realize is our server is in Italy. So when our information leaves, it's leaving the country. And for a lot of folks, it's very difficult to relay that information and keep it without blocking it from somebody's firewall. So um, I can tell you that we are almost done. Um, I do know that it, at some point it will come unless something crazy happens. Um, I don't know how fast though, because Italy is not known to make moves just to make a move. Uh, they're very calculated. It's yes. sometimes it's annoying. I'll be honest with you. It's as a salesperson, I'm like, I'm trying to make the money. Like, let's do this. But then I have to understand from them, like they give specific warranties for a reason, right? They don't just go, Oh, we're going to push this out. So we've been working on potentially putting out some heaters. Um, and CJ knows the, I don't know, the need in North America for good heaters, but at the same time, the heater has to be very, very well made. And one of the things that Italy does is we do everything. So that's why we're, you know, our prices don't go crazy. We have the product. It's because Italy is producing them and then Italy is putting them on the container directly to where CJUS is in Florida. So yeah. the only thing we wait on is the port. So outside of all of that, um, you know, CJ has this desire to make a great product. Whether that translate when it gets to the industry in terms of making everyone happy, never. Nobody's ever always happy. Um, yeah. You should have did this. Not well, it, Magnus, not in this hobby. <laughs> no, no, it's what well, it's, you know, you should have did, you know, X, Y, Z. And then I try to tell folks, you know, they, well, why are your impellers so expensive? I said, no, no, no it's impellers in general. Magnets yeah. just went up another 35% raw material cost yes so you know you you can't eat that <laughs> but also you don't want it to go a hundred percent to the consumer right that's why cj has been around for so long is because they've supported the local store like i can't contact every local store i know i can't but a local store can get my cell phone number anytime any day of the week and it's because we can help them that way and that's what cj wants so, yeah, I mean, I'll end it there. You know, if you guys have any questions, I greatly appreciate you taking the time and, you know, let me jump on here and, you know, spit some game regarding some flow and all of that jazz. Yeah. It's been all, Jay, it's been awesome. I love your product. Thanks, I love your product. You. What I'm trying to achieve with my mm -hmm. reef, I basically run two return pumps. One for my uh, ex external skimmer and yep. one for my return pump. My return pump is the reflow, which puts out a lot of heat. Now, as summer's starting to crank up and we've actually starting to hit 100 degrees right now, it's insane. We're in May. Yeah, no, it's, yeah I'm in Oklahoma. It's the same. I'm just yeah. north of you. It's wow. bad. <laughs> That reef flow, I'm just I'm generating a lot of heat in my reef. So, what and compatibility with the reef flow do you guys offer? What's your gallon? Do you know what your gallons per hour is? 
No, which I reef, don't. Which reef flow is it? It's the it's it's the gold hybrid. The gold, it, like the ha the hammerhead one. Yeah, and I, I can't even open it all the way because it will basically suck my sump dry. So. so yeah, I mean, it says it's doing 4,300 gallons per hour at 24 feet of head height. The yeah. closest thing that we have to that would be our Synchro High Flow 16. Um, it does right around, I think it's like hitting 4,000 gallons an hour. Um, yeah. And it, it does it at a uh, same head, like very close to the same head height. It, it's a submersible pump or an external pump, what? and it does not run warm. Yeah, Sweet. it does not run warm. But let me, yeah, I could have sworn, I forgot. I it's pretty close to that. Um, but if you're you don't have it open, and that thing's doing 372 watts. <laughs> Good grief! <laughs> that's more yeah. than your light. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. See, that's that's the type of stuff I start to get into. But again, I like it's. Yeah, it is what it is. Well, I mean, we do have we do have the high flow sixteen. Uh, you just look at it. Google us uh, okay. CJ high flow. You just HF sixteen point oh. See cool. if it works. Yep. Yeah, because I'm I'm we're not even into in the into the high point of summer yet, and. I'm knocking on 80 degrees right now, and I'm like, that's insane. Which a lot Do you run a heater do. too? No. No. No, okay. Yeah, that's what okay. I figured. So I don't run a heater either. I keep my tank at like 77. Yeah. Um, but what's that's one of the things, you know, CJ put a temperature probe on their controllable units. So you can read the temperature of your aquarium from, the, from your phone. And the funny thing is, is that all really they did that for – yeah, they just did that to show that the pump doesn't run warm. That's yeah. the only reason they did it, you know, because I mean, yeah, it's cool to have that benefit. But to be able to know that that pump's not running that warm was, you know, a slight flex like, hey, and another thing about majority of our line, we have a built in overheat protection. So let's say the pump does run dry, uh, it will cut itself off, it may not start right back up. But if you give it some time, once it cools down, it, it shut itself off before it reaches that melting point to ruin the motor. Um, yeah. Like our, our wave pumps, if you pull these out, they'll still cut right off. Wow. Put them back in the water, they'll turn right back on. So, you know, there's, there's some finer little technology pieces that they put in to protect us normal hobbyists because we would yeah. do some silly stuff like that. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, um, I have someone here at School of Fish who is asking if it's okay, for, and I think that your answer is going to be yes, if, if it's okay for them to reach out to you directly. They're trying to find three of your Synchra, um, the phone, SDC 9.0s. Okay. Is it, are they a consumer or are they a uh, uh, We're store? the store. We have projects going on, but DFW Supply doesn't have any. We need three. Yeah pretty quick <laughs> um you got a pen and a piece of paper what did you say 405 513-0777 i will say this in front of other hobbyists but this just we do protect the store anything you use for in-store use on a system or a new system it's 50 percent off retail uh because you shouldn't you shouldn't pay full price to do any of that stuff uh, so anything you do in your store where you're utilizing a CJ pump, not going on a consumer's tank, that means we'll but your get... tank's in store. <laughs> What's that? That means we'll get more of it. Yeah. He uh, says he's going to get more. <laughs> yeah. We're, I mean, we're here to help. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's the idea. Well, and that's you. the strongest one you have that's apex controllable, right? Correct. Yeah. That's the strongest controllable pump that we have. Now I will tell you, if you ever look at CJ's gallons per hour, some of them are very obscure. Some of them will say 951. Um, the reason why they are that way is because CJ had a thought a long time ago that if somebody decided to actually test these, they didn't want to lie. They didn't want to be off by, you know, 100 plus gallons per hour, which there are a lot that do that. They're like, oh, I'm 825. I'll just say 900. Um, yeah. That's, it, I don't know who they are, but I know that that happens. So 
that's a big thing for us is you'll see some even numbers, but you'll see a lot of weird, you know, 951. I think there's a 561. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like just, they, they could have said 560, but they wanted to tell exactly what it was from zero. And what are your thoughts on running UV on returns? Uh, I don't like them on returns. I would rather you separately pump it. If you needed a controllable separate pump for a UV sterilizer, our smallest controllable will work perfectly fine. Um, it goes up to 800 gallons an hour, which I'm sure falls in your UV sterilizer range down to 400 gallons an hour. I think it is what it is. Um, but I mean, that would cost you, I'm running off the top of my head. I think it's like, I think it's like 125 store use cost for that pump, fully controllable, all the same stuff. Now we can quote you when our customers argue about that. Yeah, you can quote me. I don't recommend putting a UV sterilizer on a return pump because right. you're stuck. Yeah. yeah. Now you have to throttle down. They always want to. You just ruined it. Yeah. I, no, I, I, I know they do. And if, I think we're trying I, to upsell them on a pump, but we're, we always tell them no. So. Yeah, I know. I get it. I mean, I, I've been doing as a consumer and I, the worst industry is reptiles. You want to talk about cutting corners. That's the worst one. So when I, when I see that and I hear a customer say that, you know, at that point, I just, I tell them, like, I've, I've talked to customers in stores for the store and I'm like, you know, that stuff doesn't work. And if you're going to try it, it's going to fail, but don't put that on us and don't put that on the store. That's your decision to, to throttle down your return pump. Now your main tank is suffering and then you'll go to a forum and what will they say? Oh, School of Fish and Sea Chase screwed up my tank. I hooked it up to UV sterilization. That's the extreme, right? That's what we don't want. So I always say, if you provide as much information as you can and they still do what they do, I can still go to bed at night and say, I gave them my best <laughs> and they didn't take it. Um, you know, and, and I hope that they don't crash their tank, but more than likely it's those folks that are going to end up ruining their tank doing something silly diying something that they shouldn't diy <laughs> that's what happened yeah. but also if if you know you've got consumers that have problems this you know this goes with if, if anybody has friends that have cj products or whatever you know if you have a consumer or a friend that says hey i'm having problems with my pump you tell them contact cj like i'm literally all over I will answer every single question as best I can. And I will try. Sometimes I miss them, but I, you know, I had a store call me yesterday. Actually, it was a distributor rep called me in a store and I answered the questions. I've had stores call me do an install saying, I don't know how to turn this thing on. And they're like, you answered the phone. I'm like, well, yeah, that's, that's 90% of my job guy is to answer the phone. Like if I can't answer the phone, I shouldn't be doing any of this. No. So like, that's the idea. Now I'd much rather be in person, but I can only be in so many places. Yeah. Well, we're, and we are so very, very grateful that you came here this evening. Thank you so much for, for taking your time and sharing oh, with us tonight. Um, I, I want to do a recap of announcements. We had some people come in late and then we had um, people join on Zoom late um, and then we're going to do a store tour. So Jay, do you have any closing words that you'd like to share? This evening? No, I, great, I greatly appreciate it. Um, I'll email you privately and I'll send you this so you could forward to everyone. Okay, um, I am going to go eat dinner. Okay. Um, I can smell it and I'm very hungry. <laughs> Um, but thank you very much for having me. And I'm sure I'll see you guys at Reef of Palooza Dallas or Aquashella Dallas, uh, hopefully. Yes, so thank you yes. so much, guys. Appreciate it, Jay. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you. very much, Jay. Um, so I'm going to recap our announcements. And um, I'm going to start with we're at School of Fish. Uh, I think some of you caught that as uh, if you Zoom people. Um, and that was just uh, Jay Wilson of CJ. Our photo of the month, you can submit for June. You can vote for May photos. And a congratulations to user ID Raul for April. And um, as a winner, winners get to select a $50 gift certificate from any of the club's sponsors. So yay for that. 
Um, May 31st is going to be our bounce back part two. And we've got um, between parts one and two, we have over $20,000 worth of giveaways to help people who were impacted by the ice storm. June 18th is our summer frag swap. If you're a premium member, you get to come in a little early. Otherwise it is 12 to three and we will be at Heritage Trace Church in Fort Worth. And Cynthia, I, uh, or Sonia, I see you. And um, I'm so excited because she's going to be a hobbyist. So I'm gonna do a shout out for her and my little ears. Um, it, uh, although I can see, I don't think my ears are making it onto the recording, but my ears are looking forward to your jewelry. So. Um, a shout out for our hobbyists. Um, you'll see more than just coral frags. And one of the things that came up in tonight's discussion and, and something that people have been mentioning is if you have extra equipment, maybe you want to get a table space and move some of that extra equipment and help someone else out who might need some backup equipment, right? Um, so just an idea, wanted to throw it out there because we do have a few table spaces still available. Not many, but we have some. Um, June 22nd is the next club meeting. Our Algae Barn is going to have multiple uh, speakers. So uh, Raven is coordinating all of them and it's hybrid. So they'll be coming in via Zoom and you guys are welcome to come in via Zoom or for those of you who like to come in person and socialize, we'll be at Odyssey Pets and we'll have pizza like we always do. Then to um, switch gears, you'll see the club at, um, at Dallas Coral Farmers Market on June 4th. We have a booth there and we are approaching another milestone. We are coming up on 100 YouTube channel um, subscribers, woohoo! And the more subscribers the club has, the more variety of recordings YouTube allows us to, to pass, uh, post up there. And our newest post is the updated bus tour video. So thank you, Wes, uh, for that. Very well done. Um, and that just got updated up there. And then I'm going to switch gears again and now um, take you on a tour here at School of Fish. Now, um, it is after hours. They have kept this open for us. I'm going to transition from audio here to audio here. Audio here. Ooh, I'm on a big screen. Okay. Take you on a There we go. So here's your chair. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn that speakers off. For a second. Hey, Lee. Hi, Sanya. How are you? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, so here we are at the uh, front door and this is featuring a, a shout out for a Dallas Fort Worth member that we have. And if you are a fan, you've got picky eaters. School of Fish is one of the places you can pick up some live black worms. Now, as I mentioned, some of the fish are sleeping. They have mangroves for sale. There's a bit huge. <gasps> There's a pipefish in there. Some dry goods. Rescue fish. Ooh, all 
diabetes? Little clouds trying to sleep against the rock. but we're kind of here in a dark corner. So I'm gonna move through here quickly. But there's a gigantic moray eel. Can you guys see him? Wow, he's huge. He's thicker than my arm. Coming back to some light here. All right, there's lots and lots of tanks, but it's all dark. So I'm just gonna move over here. And we're coming up on some new, new arrivals that came in. Pyramid butterfly fish coming up. We all love to watch the little clown sleepy. Feather duster in the back. Absolutely beautiful fish in this tank. Now there's going to be two rows of fish here. Gonna come down to see these guys. Aren't you cutie? Coming around. These guys here are still awake. And then behind me, some of you may remember School of Fish videos uh, from our bus tour. This was the tank that was holding that white lysinic eel uh, that was super cool. Got uh, hobby club equipment there in the way. So we'll swing over to this side so you can see this tank over here. And then this is how the Zoom people see everything. So we're seeing ourselves and there's the hobby club banner. So thank you all for watching this evening. Um, you'll find this on our YouTube channel by the weekend, perhaps sooner. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you at the next event. Thank you guys for coming. Enjoyed it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.